we're ready now to measure the voltages across our circuit. This is the series and parallel combination circuit. So just as a check, let's check the battery. I'm going to put this at 20 volts maximum because 2000 millivolts is only 2 volts. The battery shouldn't have that much voltage to it because it's only through it's uh, it should be 3 volts approximately. And if I put that in the right order, there you go, about 3.04 volts. Now, notice something that I did differently in this setup that I didn't do earlier. I kept getting messed up by the fact that the red wire is traditionally positive. And the other color, be it red, or excuse me, be black, or white or whatever it happens to be, that is the one that's on the negative end. Again, the color doesn't matter the wire, it's the same copper inside no matter what. But since this is traditionally the red side is positive, it's coming from the positive side of the battery. Batteries actually. Okay, so now I'm ready to measure. I am going to turn this down a little bit, actually turn the sensitivity up. It's weird how we say that. The sensitivity is now higher, so I can measure down to uh, 2,000 millivolts, which is essentially 2 volts. We will have to do a conversion here for this, because in the data table it asks for it in volts. So I'm going to just move my wire a little bit, and now I'm ready to do the measurement. So that is resistor 1. Looks like 1,202 millivolts or 1.202 volts. Now I'm going to measure across resistor 2. That is the 220 ohm, red, red, brown. Looks like 1,775 or 4 or 5. See how steady I can get this. You will get some flutter in that last digit. Let's put it in as 4. Okay, so that's for resistor 2. Resistor 3 is the 470 volt. Excuse me, 470 ohm, looks like 1,830 millivolts. Now for 4 and 5, I do need to make sure I keep these intact. Resistor 4 is 22 ohms. That's going to be red, red. Resistor 5 is 10. That's going to be brown, black. Black, red, red, black. So here's resistor 4. You need to make sure you get a good connection there. Looks like 55 milliohms. And resistor 5. Shouldn't be too much of a surprise. That is also 55 milliohms. Millivolts, sorry, millivolts. Millivolts down here for resistor 4 as well. Okay, notice those two are in parallel, so it shouldn't be too surprising that they have, this, have the same voltage. So that is all the voltage measurements for the series parallel combination circuit. We're still looking at the series parallel combination circuit. We just took the resistance, excuse me, the voltages across each of these resistors. Now I'm going to measure the amperes across. And for this, I have a couple of choices here. I want to get as many significant digits as I can. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit deeper than I did for the simpler circuits. 
So I'm going to start out with this at 20 milli ohms, excuse me, milli amps here. And remember that when we do these, we have to measure, put our multimeter in series. So I'm going to start there and go through the multimeter in, amp, in the ammeter function. And it looks like I was able to measure down to uh, 11.62 milliamps. Notice that if I go to 2000 microamps, that's too sensitive. I'm off the scale, so I need to go back to here. That would be like trying to measure something that is a meter long with a ruler, which is only, only about 30 centimeters. It's a meter long, it's too long, you'd have to get the next level up or the next level down, depending on which way you go. So my example there was backwards, but hopefully you understand what I'm talking about with it. So that was the current into and through resistor one. Now we need to do the current through resistor two. So I'm gonna pop resistor two out. And I need to make sure I put these back in the right spots each time. To be honest, I have retaped this video at least once, maybe twice, because I made similar mistakes to that. Again, the red is upstream. This is downstream. It helps with that current analogy. So resistor two, we've got a current of 7.87 milliamps. Put that back in place. And like I said, it's really easy to get these in the wrong spot. So I wanna be very careful with that. The other thing you have to watch out when you're doing circuits is sometimes you'll move one of these and you'll move both ends. One of the ends will pop out. That throws things off, so you have to double check each time. We're now ready to look at resistor 3. Looks like that's 3.89 milliamps. That was resistor 3. Resistor four and five are going to be a bit more of a challenge. Not too bad though. So let me sneak that off to the side. Get that in the right direction. Looks like 1.9, 1 1.90 milliamps. Now I've mentioned that flutter before, but just as a warning, if this were a really complex circuit that I was using for a scientific experiment where this circuit was going to be part of a larger system, I would probably have resistors that had a lot better tolerance and I would measure with a better multimeter and I would be much more careful with my measurements. For what we're doing, that last little bit of flutter, remember we've talked about how there is uncertainty in the number. That's where the, uh, that type of uncertainty comes in this type of a measurement. So we just did resistor four, resistor five, I'll pop that out. And now I'll measure the current through that. That is 4.14 milliamps. And that looks like we're pretty good. Let's just do one last check. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to measure the current out the other end and hopefully I don't remember what the specific number was I'll have to go back and watch the video but that looks somewhat familiar that is now leaving the circuit completely going back into the battery 
that's about the same current that was going in at the top of the battery. So that makes me feel like I've done what I need to do here and I should be in pretty good shape. Okay, as always at the end of these, make sure that you disconnect your battery. And make sure you turn off your multimeter. These things will run down if you let them turn on. So that is the series parallel combination circuit. Good luck with writing up your lab report.